So you've been seeing the Prophet Sallallahu from afar. You've seen him in Jum'ah. You've prayed behind him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You've seen him in the battles. You've seen him in the difficult times. You've seen him in the celebrations and the feasts and their Eid. And you've been in some small gatherings with him, but now you want to invite the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to your house. So what should you know if you're going to walk up to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and say, Ya Rasulullah, will you come to my house? First and foremost, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that I will accept the invitation of anyone, even if all they have to serve me is the arm or the foot of a sheep. So you don't have to worry about not having enough to serve the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or that being a factor. If you're going to invite the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, no matter what you're serving him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he will come. Another thing is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would not only accept the invitations of a certain class of people. Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to visit the sick, he used to attend the janaas, used to attend the funerals, he used to ride on donkeys sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he used to accept the invitations of everyone, even those who were enslaved. So subhanAllah, imagine someone who is a slave in a society, and he invites the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa will accept the invitation. So Anas radiallahu anhu is saying this was the nature of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. And so just like when it came to visiting the sick, he did not care if this was a powerful person or not. And he attended all of the jannah as all of the funerals. And he rode Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even on the most humble of animals. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam accepted an invitation no matter how humble the invitation was. So you come home and you say, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is coming to dinner. What do we serve this man, alayhi salatu wasalam? We know that he does not eat extravagantly, but we want to give him something that he likes, alayhi salatu wasalam. So for one, the Prophet sallam, liked cold, sweet drinks, alayhi salatu wasalam. So he loved al-laban, he loved uh, yogurt drinks, sallallahu alayhi wasalam. He loved cold water that he would sweeten with honey, alayhi salatu wasalam. This was a hot desert climate, so the Prophet sallam's preferences in that regard reflect that, alayhi salatu wasalam. And the Prophet Sallallahu was very simple in that he liked to have a bread of sorts Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he liked to rub it with something. He liked to put something on that bread. And whatever it was that the Prophet Sallallahu could dip that bread in, he was pleased with it Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So if you had honey, the Prophet Sallallahu loved honey. If you had date paste, that was one of the favorite foods of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, al-hais. If you had only oil, the Prophet Sallallahu loved that. And SubhanAllah, even vinegar, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said what a good paste vinegar is. If all you had was vinegar and he took some bread Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to rub and to uh, put vinegar on it, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would eat it Alaihi Salatu Wasallam. When it came to the, the lamb, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved the shoulder of the lamb. And that's why you have the famous hadith of Aisha Radiallahu Ta'ala Anha, where she donated everything from the lamb except for the shoulder. She said, Ya Rasulullah, I saved this for you. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, rather you gave away the shoulder in that you did not take the ajr, the reward of the shoulder in sadaqah and charity because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi loved to give what he loved most alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, when you serve the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi food, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi would never criticize food, nor would he overpraise it, right? And that's from his adab, his akhlaq, from his mannerism Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And some of the ulama, they say that one of the wisdoms of that is that if the Prophet Sallallahu would overpraise some food, then if you did not get the overpraise for food, then you would think that something was wrong with it. So the Prophet Sallallahu was always grateful. He never dismissed food. He never criticized food Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's not one single narration of him criticizing food. And at the same time, the Prophet Sallallahu would simply thank you for the food so that he doesn't set a standard Alayhi Salatu Wasallam where you expect lots of praise for the food. But if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi liked your food, then it was obvious, right? And there's a particular Persian neighbor that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi had, and he used to make a really good broth, a really good soup. And he used to give it to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sometimes, and Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved it. So because he knew that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi liked this very particular broth, he goes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he says, Ya Rasulullah, come to my house and eat some of my soup. The Prophet وسلم, he has Aisha radiallahu anha. He says, Wahadi, can she come too? He said, no. So SubhanAllah, the next day, 
he comes to the Prophet Sallallahu and he invites the Prophet Sallallahu again for soup. The Prophet Sallallahu said, can my wife come? He says, no, the Prophet Sallallahu said that I'm okay, I don't wanna come. So the third time he invites the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam over to his house. And after he invites the Prophet Sallallahu the Prophet Sallallahu says, well, hadi, can I bring my wife? And he says, okay, the Prophet Sallallahu says, okay, we're coming. And Imam Nawawi Rahimahullah, he comments on this. He said that the Prophet Sallallahu disliked attending a special meal without Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. So if you're inviting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you invite his wife as well. And this was again, a very unique way of the Prophet Sallallahu showing the consideration that he had for his family alayhi salatu wasalam in a society that really was not used to that. You also could expect that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would bring along with him Ahl al-Sufa, the poor people uh, that lived in the masjid or the orphans or the hungry. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would always bring his posse and his posse Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the forgotten. And there is this beautiful narration as well because you know, if you had him in your house, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wouldn't you want him to make dua for you, right? I mean, at the end of the day, you've served him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's eaten your food. He said, Jazakumullahu Khaira. You've established probably a new level of your relationship with him because you've had him in your house and he's eaten with you, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But you'd want his dua, right? And you'd want him to pray in your house. Like how special is it to say that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed in my house? And that's something so beautiful about him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he knew that. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would pray in people's homes so that they could feel that connection and they would take that place as a musalla, of course, and they loved that place. Anas Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu says, Salaitu ana wa yatimun fi baytina khalfa nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa um Sulaim khalfana. Anas Radiallahu Anhu describes this. He says, I remember one time the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a guest in our home and I prayed behind the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Next to me was an orphan and behind us was Umm Sulaim radiallahu ta'ala anha, who of course was the mother of Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he even says, one time my grandmother, Mulaika, uh, was the name of his grandmother radiallahu ta'ala anhu. One time she invited the Prophet sallallahu over and she wanted the Prophet sallallahu to eat from her food. So the Prophet sallallahu obliged. And after the Prophet sallallahu came, the Prophet sallallahu said, let's pray together. So I brought out this hasir, this one rug that we had and it was old and beat up. And we prayed two rak'ahs on it, and then the Prophet ﷺ left. So the Prophet ﷺ would not just come to your house as a guest and develop a connection with you, but he would make sure that he blessed your house, that you always felt that connection ﷺ, whether he was physically present in your home or not. <laughs> صلى الله عليه وسلم